Jim and Steven Ladd admit their artwork conveys some obsessive compulsive tendencies. I think our parents think we're a little crazy. <laughs> the Lads have been collaborators since the late 90s. Their work is all hand stitched, beaded, and elaborately presented, and there's a lot of it. This is the most objects we've ever had in an exhibition ever. 503 pieces to be exact. Some pieces take years to make. Some are revealed through performance. There are beaded trees, scrolls of fabric, and beaded handbags that look like something Marie Antoinette would carry her rouge in. And there are boxes, a lot of boxes. Some are designed to be opened, others hold multiples. There are towers full of the sharp and the soft, the round and the pointed. Back in like 90, Nine. 98, I called Steve, he had graduated from college, and I was like, why don't you move to New York? He moved to New York. <laughs> and we started just collaborating. Uh, he was making a lot of his own clothes at the time, and I was doing a lot of beadwork. I've always been fascinated with beads and hand stitching and macrame. Steven's love is textiles. They began combining the two crafts. And we weren't really sure if it was going to be performance, video, design, art, fashion. And so we were just working on all of these different things at once. And then it all sort of merged together. And it was kind of like, how many different creative things can we cram into this one project? And with how much our hands move, you might think <laughs> that we know sign language, but this is actually just our own movement. It means nothing. <laughs> the brothers come from a close family. We grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and we had, uh, I'm the youngest of four. Barbara Matt, Stevie, Billy. There's <laughs> four of us, and we're all one year apart. And, you know, we grew up in this really loving family in, like, just South County, which is just a small suburb of St. Louis. Their memories of growing up together inform a lot of their artwork, like this piece, which references a high school tradition the brothers started during lunch period. <laughs> And we didn't get like lunch money from our mom. You know, we both had jobs, and you know, instead of going to the lunch room, we would go buy nutty bars, and you know, we would take those nutty bars and go into the hallway and pull our socks up over our pants, and we would like call it the nutty bar brigade, and we'd go skipping through the hallways, and we would pass through like all the classrooms and be <laughs> waving to all the teachers as we would like skip through the hallways. The piece is called the Nutty Bar Brigade. It's made up of fabrics and rich browns, colors reminiscent of the Nutty Bar. Which are these, you know, wafered, chocolate-covered delights. Can I get a Nutty Bar over here? <laughs> Come on. If we're going to do these interviews, Christine. somebody's got to have a Nutty Christine. Bar. Seriously? We don't have Nutty Bars? I'm done. I'm out of here. The fabrics in the Nutty Bar Brigade were donated. A lot of the materials in the lads' work are recycled. You know, we don't like to waste and we make, can make things out of anything. So it's become very important for us to use recycled materials. Rob Seidner is the director of the Minge, which showcases folk art, craft and design. When he first saw the brothers artwork, he was impressed. Realizing later that, that they really are uh, self-taught helped me to realize their work very much belonged here, as well as the fact that they are so craft centered and design centered. The lads say the darker parts of their childhood are explored in the use of sharp objects in their work and also in some of the memories they explore, like the day they realized as kids that their house was infested with ants. And one day we pulled out this red Lego box from underneath our bed and opened it up and thousands of ants started pouring millions out of, of it. Black carpenter ants started pouring out of it and we looked at each other and we're like, Mom! And like she came running into the room and it was like, all of a sudden we started pulling like the beds away from the wall. And, and there were these trails of ants like running yeah. along the entire house. That inspired Ant Infestation, a piece that includes William's beaded trees, Stephen's textile scrolls, and 700 bronze cast ants. So it's kind of this contrast between this darkness and the light. And you know, we both love our lives. So it's like you can have this darkness and you can have this sort of, you know, oppressive mood, but we love our lives. The Lad Brothers have something of a mantra they often share. Spend your life doing what you love, be focused and disciplined, collaborate. And as you'll see at the Minge exhibit titled Function and Fantasy, that mantra has served the brothers well. Angela Carone, KPBS News.